We have learned how to build AI-powered text completion and streaming features. In both cases, we've been using this line, model OpenAI GPT 4.1 Nano. But what exactly is a model? Why this specific one? And how do you choose the right model for your own projects? Let's dive in and understand these foundational concepts. In simple terms, an AI model is a program that has been trained on a set of data to recognize patterns and make predictions without human intervention. Think of it like a really smart assistant who has read millions of books and can now help you write, analyze, or create based on all that knowledge. In the real world, AI models power everything from the autocomplete in your phone's keyboard to self-driving cars. Now let's break down the different types of models you will work with as an application developer. First up, we have text generation models, and these are your bread and butter. They process and generate human-like text, perfect for everything from writing and analysis to conversion and code. You'll also hear people call them LLMs, which stands for large language models. They're large because they were trained on absolutely massive amounts of text data. To give you some perspective here, GPT-4 was trained on hundreds of billions of words. There's more text than you could read in a thousand lifetimes. But all that training is what allows these models to understand context, follow instructions, and generate human-like text. The big names here are GPT-4 from OpenAI, Claude from Anthropic, and Gemini from Google. For most of your AI features like chatbots, content generation, code assistance, these are what you'll use. Second, we have embedding models. Now, these are a bit different. Instead of generating text, they convert text into numbers, specifically vectors that capture the meaning of the text. Here's a simple way to think about it. Imagine if you could turn the meaning of a sentence into a set of coordinates on a map. Similar meanings would be close together on that map. That's essentially what embeddings do. You might not use these directly as often, but they're working behind the scenes in features like content recommendations. For example, you find Italian restaurants when you search for pasta places. Then we have image models. These either generate images from text description or analyze existing images. Popular ones include Midjourney, and GPT image models from OpenAI, and Flux from Black Forest Labs. These are perfect for generating product images, analyzing uploaded photos, or creating visual content on the fly. Finally, we have multimodal models, which are the Swiss army knives of the AI world. These can handle multiple types of input and output. Feed them text, images, or sometimes even audio, and they will process it all. They're incredibly versatile, but come with higher costs. Models like GPT-4, Claude 4, and Gemini fall into this category. Now that we know the different types, let's talk about what makes each model unique. Understanding model characteristics will help you pick the right model for your use case. First, we have context window, which is how much information a model can process in a single conversation. Think of it as the model's working memory. Some models can hold only a few pages of text at once, while others can process entire books. If you're building a document analysis app, you will want a model with a large context window. But for simple Q&A or basic chat, a model with a smaller context window works just fine. Second, we have intelligence, which determines how well a model understands nuance, follows complex instructions, and generates high quality output. Less capable models are great for straightforward tasks like answering FAQs, categorizing text, or following templates. But when you need creativity, complex problem solving, or understanding context and subtext, that's when you reach for the more capable models. Always match the model to your task complexity. Next, we have speed, which is all about response time. If users are waiting for a response, like in a chat interface, you need speed. Nobody wants to stare at a loading spinner. But if you're generating reports in the background, take your time and use a slower model with better quality. Finally, we have cost, which varies between models. The pattern is pretty predictable. Faster, smarter, larger context window models cost more. My tip for you is to use cheaper models during development. Now here is a simple framework to help you choose the right model for your use case. 
For real-time features like autocomplete or a simple chat interface, speed is king. Users expect instant responses, so pick a fast model, even if it's not the smartest. For generating content, quality beats speed. Users will wait an extra second or two for better writing, so pick a more intelligent model. For analyzing documents, you need a large context window to fit everything. Don't try to squeeze a large PDF through a small model. You should always test and experiment with different models to find the right balance for your use case. Think of it like choosing between a sports car and a city car. Both get you where you need to go, but one is built for performance while the other is built for efficiency. So start cheap, monitor usage, upgrade and optimize based on actual needs. All right, now that we've learned about models, you might be wondering who creates and maintains these models. This is where providers come in. If models are cars, providers are the manufacturers. Companies like OpenAI, Anthropic, and Google are like the Ford, BMW, and Mercedes of the AI world. Each provider invests hundreds of millions in research, has their own approach, and offers different strengths. When choosing a provider, consider reliability, pricing, features, and privacy. Looking at our code, it should be clear now. OpenAI is our provider, and GPT 4.1 Nano is their model. Now, one of the great features about the AI SDK is that it makes it super easy to switch between different models and providers. Let me show you how to switch from OpenAI's GPT 4.1 Nano to Anthropic's Cloud Sonnet 4. First, within the project folder, so link us AI app, Install AI SDK's Anthropic package. So npm install at ai-sdk slash anthropic. Next, we need an API key. You can head to Anthropic's console, link in the description, create an account and generate a key. Unfortunately, there is no free tier when it comes to AI models. But if you prefer not to pay for yet another provider, you can simply watch what I'm doing without having to create an account. You can use the learnings for when the time comes. So once you've created an account, add the key to your .env.local file. Now I'm going to do this off camera, but here's how you do it. You have your OpenAI API key already set, and you add another Anthropic API key. These will be in quotes. Remember, API keys are secret. Never commit them to Git. All right, I've just updated mine behind the scenes. Now for the fun part. In the route handler present in the stream folder, import Anthropic from AI SDK slash Anthropic. Update the model to Anthropic. And the model is Claude Sonnet 4. And we have the particular date. Each provider has a different naming convention. So we have to follow that. But this is pretty much it. One line change is all it takes to switch between models and providers. Save the file, restart the dev server, so npm run dev, and head to the browser. Submit a new prompt, so tell me about Batman, and watch. We see the response streaming in, but this time it is from Anthropic's cloud model. The AI SDK's unified API means you can easily experiment with different models by just changing the provider and model name. This makes it easy to test different models during development, switch providers and models based on cost or performance needs, have fallback models if one provider is down, and upgrade to newer model versions as they're released. No need to learn different APIs or rewrite your application logic. The AI SDK handles all the implementation details behind the scenes. If you want to switch back, just change this line to model OpenAI GPT 4.1 Nano. It really is that simple. Before we wrap up, let me mention that OpenAI's GPT 4.1 Nano is perfect for learning. If you look at OpenAI's docs, you will see that GPT 4.1 Nano is the fastest, most cost-effective GPT 4.1 model. And if you navigate to the pricing page, you will see that GPT 4.1 Nano is a clear winner by just looking at the numbers. It costs 10 cents per million input tokens and 40 cents 
per million output tokens. But what exactly are tokens? Let's explore that next. <laughs> 